Well, greetings, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well, staying uh, healthy and staying safe. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with this session. Uh, this is the Faith Formation live stream session for February 3rd, 2021, uh, for all grades, kindergarten through 10th. I want to uh, talk about the upcoming calendars, uh, February and March. Obviously, the first one here is February 3rd. We're having our live stream class, as we do on the first Wednesday of, of the months that we have faith formation. Next Wednesday, February 10th, a week from today, we'll have a Zoom session for students in kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, that'll start at 6.30 next Wednesday. Um, I will send that link out to uh, Faith Formation parents the Monday before the Zoom meeting uh, in the evening so that you'll have it. So parents, please share that link with your students, or if they're really young, help them get on to uh, the Zoom connection uh, next Wednesday. We uh, won't even, we'll only go about maybe 30 minutes or less in that because I know it's getting late and some of them need to get to bed. Uh, following that week, uh, Feb two weeks from tonight, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday for 2021. Uh, there will be a 6 p.m. Mass at St. Margaret Mary. Uh, we would like you to either go to that Mass live at 6 o'clock or uh, tune into it um, via the live stream uh, that night or uh, watch that Mass at another time uh, during the week. Be no other homework or check-in that week of Ash Wednesday, so please participate in the Ash Wednesday Mass, either virtually or in person. The last Wednesday of February, um, we'll actually be in talking about Lent Week 2. Uh, you should be using the materials if you're uh, in grades kindergarten through 8th grade. You'll be using the Flom Gospel Weeklies, the paper versions, and if you're in ninth and 10th grade, you'll be using your subscription to Spirit Magazine, and you'll be talking that week and working individually uh, for the upcoming second Sunday of Lent. So I said, we still have two more weeks of ordinary time, which this Sunday, February 7th, and the following February 13th. Lent starts with Ash Wednesday on Wednesday, February 17th. Let's talk about... The, the March calendar, uh, the first Wednesday of March, we'll have another live stream at 6.30 uh, via the YouTube channel for the church. And again, you can get that YouTube connection as you are tonight or whenever you're watching that, either through our website or through YouTube, St. Margaret Mary Golden Valley. March 10th, the 9th and 10th graders will have their next Zoom session. Uh, so that's a little over a month away. Uh, again, that'll be at 6.30. We'll probably be live on um, Zoom for maybe about 45 minutes, an hour max. Uh, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, uh, we'll have a Zoom class for students in grades 6 through 8. And March 24th, we'll have a, another Zoom class for kindergarten for students in kindergarten through grades five. Um, so that's way over a month away. And when, um, I just wanna make this clear, I think there's been some confusion. When we have a specific Zoom class for uh, specific grade levels, the other grades that don't have that Zoom class that night should be using their regular take home self-study materials, again, for students in K through grade Eight, the Flom Gospel Weeklies, and Grades 9 and 10, the Spirit Magazine. Um, the six weeks of ordinary time between Christmas and Lent, Jesus has been a really busy guy. We talked a lot about this last time that Jesus uh, got baptized. Um, that was probably way back in January when that gospel came up, and we know he did that in the Jordan River. Some other activities that Jesus has been going through in the in the six weeks of ordinary time, uh, he goes into the desert. Uh, again, when we go get into Lent, we'll be hearing more about Jesus in the desert. But Jesus' activity did lead us 
uh, to the desert in the last six weeks. Um, we also heard recently that Jesus begins to preach uh, in the synagogues. Uh, the, the people were astonished at his teachings, and it says that he taught with authority. So Jesus has been super busy in these times. Um, he Another thing that he was doing in the these six weeks of ordinary time that we hear about in our Gospels is that he was healing people of all sorts, and they were following him, um, and they, they wanted to bring everybody to him that needed healing. So uh, they would follow him from one side of the lake to the other. They'd follow him to different people's houses. Uh, there were lots of crowds around so that Jesus could heal these people that they were bringing to him. Some other things Jesus was doing, um, he didn't have, seemed to must not have much spare time as we, um, he was casting out demons from people. Uh, I think we heard that story just last Sunday in our Gospels. Um, the unique thing that I just want you to, to know about these demons is that they knew who Jesus was. Uh, they, they, um, they knew that Jesus could destroy them. They know that they knew that Jesus could take them out of other people's bodies. So they knew about Jesus and they knew Jesus. And they, they were definitely afraid of him because he, they know that Jesus could destroy them. Um, always a good activity to have, and we can model Jesus' activity on this, is praying. And hopefully that every day that you can set aside a few minutes uh, for prayer yourselves. Um, I know that I'm not a morning person. So generally, uh, that's a harder time for me to pray. I, I have a better time in the evenings. But um, we can pray wherever we are. We can you know, pray standing at our lock or sitting at our desk in school, um, at work, at the breakfast table when we're half asleep, um, as we're getting ready to go to bed and we've just uh, gotten into our nice warm beds. That's, um, I find, a really good time to pray. Um, I, I sometimes pray in the car been praying a lot during winter. Winter driving can sometimes be kind of scary. Uh, and I pray to God to get me to and from places safely. And uh, God has been very uh, wonderful in that so far, so good. Um, and it's not something I, if something would go wrong, I can't blame it on God, but God has protected me all along. So praying in the car is, is also a good thing. So we model that after Jesus uh, taking time out of his life to pray as well. Uh, something else Jesus was busy doing, uh, he was down at the Sea of Galilee and he was uh, calling his uh, first disciples. Uh, those first disciples were fisher persons and uh, he called them right out of the boat. It's said in a couple weeks in the gospel that a couple of the, the disciples got out and left their dad and the hired hands uh, in the boats to uh, work on the on the nets and, and, and continue on with the fishing. Well, Jesus called them out to follow him. So uh, why Jesus started at the, the lake, I don't know, but maybe it was a good place to start because it was an ordinary job and um, he was probably seeking out ordinary people that he knew could be do extraordinary things with him. So he headed down to the lake and called them out. So uh, these first four people that Jesus called as disciples, um, pretty, I think we hear this in this Sunday's gospel, uh, they, they, they worshiped together at the, at the then temple. And uh, Peter, we've all heard of him as one of the first four disciples, he takes the guys with him. He says, come on, guys, we're going to go down to the synagogue, the temple, and we're going to pray. And so afterwards, uh, Peter just decided after uh, after they went and worship and prayed that, that they were going to go to Peter's house, only to discover that uh, Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. So this is one of the things that we know about Peter. We know that Peter was married because uh, he had a mother-in-law. We know that he had a house. And uh, so he, he takes his friends back to his house. Sometimes like what we would do after church when during non-COVID times, we would get together and have hospitality 
or invite people over to our, our house afterwards from our from our com church community. So we know that Peter's mother-in-law meets Jesus through her son-in-law, Peter, who was one of the four first four men disciples. And that is how she had her connection. And the Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus goes and takes her by the hand and raises her up. And her response to that is that she chooses to begin serving in this new community that uh, the, the first four disciples had been uh, called to by Jesus. So there's a couple key words um, here that I want to focus on. Um, the, the first one is to raise up. Uh, in Greek, the word was Ingerian. Um, and Peter raises up his mother-in-law from the fever. She was laying in bed and he just grabs her by the hand and pulls her up. And this is kind of a similarity to what Jesus do, or, or what has happened to Jesus in the tomb. God the Father uh, raises Jesus up out of the tomb. And we hear on the words in Easter Sunday, he is not here. So we know that that is, that is the resurrection. So some similarities here with Jesus' mother or Peter's mother-in-law being raised up and Jesus being raised up out of the tomb as well. Another word that I'd really like to focus on, and we'll talk a little more about this a little further into this talk. The word is highlighted there in blue, and it's serve. And serve is the second key word in Jesus' call to the first women disciple. When Jesus raises her up, her response is to serve the new community. Uh, it says in, in the gospel that you'll hear this Sunday that when he raised her up, she got up and she started making, I don't know if it was dinner or breakfast, but making a meal uh, for Peter and his new disciple friends and Jesus. So she was there right away and immediately started serving when she was healed. And Jesus defines for us, he defines serve. Uh, we hear him say, the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve giving of one's life. And Jesus gave it all. Um, you know, he just didn't feed people or heal people or make people um, or be companions with people. He served by giving his life, by dying on the cross for us so that one day we could be raised up, lifted up into heaven when we die. If we have that faith, if we have that belief in Jesus. In, in the church, uh, the deacons, and we have two types of deacons in the church, transitional deacons and permanent deacons. Uh, Father Tom was once a deacon, uh, but he would have been a transitional deacon because it was on his way to the priesthood. But many of the churches in our, in, in our area around St. Margaret Mary do have what they call permanent deacons uh, where they minister and they, um, they help with Mass. They can't say Mass. They can do funerals, they can do weddings, uh, they can do baptisms, they do a lot of pastoral ministry. And uh, th they get their names from the word, uh, the Greek word deaconess, which means a server or a minister. And with Jesus and his new disciples, including Peter's mother-in-law, she is giving her whole life to this new community, the new community that Christ is creating and calling his disciples. Other women disciples that we hear about uh, in the Gospels, um, our church focuses a lot of times on what uh, the men did, but the women were extremely important, just as important as the men in our Gospels for being disciples. Uh, we hear from the Gospel of Mark about three women disciples, uh, Mary Magdalene. We hear about her uh, a lot around uh, the time of Christ's death and resurrection. Uh, Mary, the mother of James, and the third woman is Salome, who I believe is only mentioned by name maybe in this gospel, uh, in, in some of the editions. And they, these three women and many other women, they, look at a, they looked at a distance as Jesus died on the cross.
Uh, Mark identifies, the gospel writer Mark identifies these women. Uh, they followed and served. They followed just as Peter, Andrew, James, and John did. They did everything the same. They, they, the three women weren't fisher persons, but uh, they were also disciples of Jesus. Uh, the word, which means uh, uh, to be to follow, the word follow means to attach oneself to a teacher or commit oneself to a walk in someone's footsteps. A couple of weeks we talked more in depth about this with our ninth and tenth graders. Um, so what it, what it meant to follow, what it meant to be a disciple. But again, that uh, it's a teacher that they commit to walking in someone else's footsteps. Every once in a while, maybe in your um, in your weekly materials, you'll see a reference like this. It has CCC and then a number sign and then whatever the number is. Uh, the CCC stands for the, Catholic, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, there are and they are all numbered. So basically, the catechisms are like an, almost like a paragraph form. Uh, in most cases, and those paragraphs have numbers on them so that you can reference them. And these are um, all things that have been um, human written, uh, but they, they define who our church is and uh, along with the scriptures. And so the Catechism of the Catholic Church number 547 reads like this, the women who came to finish anointing the body of Jesus were the first to encounter the risen one and thus the first messengers of Christ's resurrection. And that's a that's a pretty important task that they have. If you think back to maybe what you've heard on Good Friday or during the, the Passion readings, uh, the Sunday before Easter, uh, the the women were going to anoint the bodies, and that was one of the one of the things they did back then because they didn't have embalming. Uh, where they would preserve the bodies with chemicals inside, so they would go and, and anoint with uh, different oils uh, the bodies of, of the dead people. But these same women who took the time out of their lives to go anoint uh, Jesus were there when the angel met them at the tomb and said, hey, you know what? He's risen. He's not here. So they were the first messengers. They went running off to the other apostles who were hiding at that time to spread the, the news that, you know, hey, you know what? Jesus isn't in the tomb anymore. Um, he, he's risen. I mean, that didn't come without some fears from within themselves as well. Uh, when they saw the gardener and the gardener, they thought maybe someone stole his body. But that gardener turned out to be an angel. And the angel gave them the instructions what to do, and, and they followed those instructions and followed through spreading about Christ's resurrection. Um, in Mark's gospel, only women are at Jesus' arrest. Uh, they witness his death. They witness his burial, and they, they witness the absence from the tomb. Uh, they stand with him in his suffering. If, if you remember, as they're, they're doing the way of the cross, it's called the Via Della Rosa. Uh, they, the, the women were there. They were the ones who, who uh, you know, put the, the, the towel on or the rag on Jesus' face. They were the ones that, you know, got him something, some, something to drink. And these, these women modeled the, the two essential qualities of all disciples they attached themselves to Jesus, and they gave their lives in serving his community. So they were all about serving Jesus and promoting and being the early disciples and spreading the news about Jesus. Now I'd like you to think about um, at St. Margaret Mary, um, if you can identify women and or men at St. Margaret Mary, who give examples of uh, contemporary ways to follow and serve Jesus, to follow Jesus as his disciples. So they might be people who uh, stand before us and give us and talk through and read us the word of God so that we can learn from the sacred scriptures. 
Uh, they might be people who work behind the scenes making uh, the, the environment, the, the, the curtain colors change for the seasons, the different uh, things that we put out to en enhance our worship. Um, the people who are always there maybe an hour before Mass to get the altar breads out, pour the wine, make sure there's fresh water, make sure some, that the lights get turned on, make uh, sure that the right linens are out. Or even think about think about this, you know, th those linens we use, someone has to wash them. We have a, a woman in our parish that um, we call her up and uh, she sends one of her kids over and she picks up a bag of uh, dirty towels and, and dirty uh, purifiers, those the little towels that we use on the altar, and, and she washes, dries them, and they uh, all have to be ironed, and I think they're ironed with starch and things like that, so that they are uh, first class ready to go. Some things that you don't even think about like that, you know, who waters uh, the plants in church? They just don't water themselves, and if they don't get water, they, they die. You know, who changes the light bulbs? Uh, especially now we have to have it bright for uh, the live streaming that happens. You know, who who runs the cameras? Who does the music? Who sings the music? Who empties the trash at church? There's a lot of people behind the scenes that do all these things that um, so that they are serving Jesus as uh, modern-day uh, disciples. You know, things that, like, we've already mentioned a few things, but, you know, even people need to wash windows or polish candle holders. Um, people have to order the supplies. I, I know just even today, uh, in order, a box of candles came and they put them on the, the front steps and someone had to come pick them up so that they can get over to the church. You know, who types the bulletin that so that the, the news of the parish um, gets out to everybody? You know, how does that bulletin even get there? It comes... Uh, in, a, in a FedEx truck and someone carries them over to church and someone posts them online. So it's it, there's a lot of different things uh, in contemporary ways, modern ways that people are serving Jesus as disciples. So think in your mind, and, and this is actually one of your questions in your check-in, see if you can identify any of those people that Maybe you know. Maybe they're your moms or dads. Maybe they're your grandparents. Maybe they're your neighbors. But all those people work together to be disciples of Jesus. The next question um, is, what ministries can you currently do at St. Margaret Mary to serve the community? Obviously, during COVID times, we uh, have a lot more restrictions. Um, but our, our young people, when it's non-COVID times, can be altar servers. Uh, we have a lot of all our middle schoolers and high schoolers doing AV ministry. We have some of our middle schoolers and, and high schoolers that are, are lectors proclaiming the Word of God. Um, there are lots of ways to serve our, our community. At Christmas time, we saw a, a whole handful from one family play the bells to in, enhance our, our Christmas liturgy. Um, they were able to do that because they, they're all from the same family and hopefully we can return to having uh, choirs and, and, and non-COVID type music soon, um, but we'll, we'll wait for that day to come. So this is a, the second, there are two questions this week in your check-in um, is, you know, identify people who make things happen at the church and then how that you can serve the church and the community. And it ne doesn't even necessarily have to be something that happens on the weekend. Um, one, one of the things is that it would be great to have people that could just get a list of phone numbers and, and call people and uh, say, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm from St. Margaret. I'm a parishioner at St. Margaret Mary. Just wanted to check in and see how you're doing, especially I know our elderly people would love calls uh, they're sitting at home, afraid to go out. They just love to have some interaction with people. Maybe you want to might want to make some cards and um, give them to your neighbors. Or if, if you know people that go to our church, uh, you know maybe go uh, put them in their mailboxes and just say, "Hey, how you doing? Uh, hope you're staying healthy." 
Uh, those are all ways to serve our community, even, even in this time. I know it's really hard to, to prepare food for people at this time, because that's um, there are lots of restrictions on that. But uh, maybe you can take your neighbor across the street that goes uh, to our church, take her a, a, a Rice Krispie bar that you got from the store individually wrapped, or maybe you made some in your house and, and want to wrap them up and, and give them out to people. People uh, like those little treats in life. Those are all ways to serve our community. And everybody has their own gifts and their own talents and their own ways on how to serve. So um, when you go to answer these questions, uh, really think about that and ponder on that. Uh, with my talents, what can I what can I do to serve my community? So as I said, those two questions are in our check-in for the week. Those are the only two questions. Um, so put some thought, some effort in them um, as you go forward um, to answer those questions. And I think we'll call this a wrap for tonight. Um, most of the time when we get on uh, these electronic things, I know that a lot of you have had a lot of screen time during the week. And I, I don't want you to have a Zoom fatigue. I think we're maybe all getting that. And I hope a lot of you are, are back in the classrooms and uh, uh, be, being able to be with your, your friends back at school. So we're going to close in prayer, and uh, we'll call it a wrap then. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we just thank you for our parish community of St. Margaret Mary. We thank you for... Um, the disciples that you called from the Sea of Galilee. We thank you for our the first women disciples that came to serve in their community as well. And help us to take that on as a way of life and help us to learn by their example to serve our community as well so that we can be disciples of you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Uh, thank you for watching tonight. Remember the check-in and we'll be talking to you soon. Good night.